special episode with you today. As always, I am your host, BJ Worthy. And today I am talking to my guy, Josh Augustine. Josh, I know that we weren't planning on doing something, but there's been a lot going on with you. I know it's fight week. So first and foremost, I really appreciate your time. I don't typically do interviews on fight week, but for you, it just was something that came together. Can you tell everybody real quick, what's the deal with you? Why am I bothering you on fight week? What's going on? Yeah. So I am making my Bellator debut this weekend in my hometown, uh, my Walter weight debut as well. Um, so I had about five opponents drop out from the original opponent and, uh, you know, just wanted to still make the opportunity happen and we got the right guy. Um, so yeah, we're jumping on it. Josh, this is something that you talked, you spoke this into existence nine months ago on episode one. I don't remember when it was that we did episode the first episode together. This is our third or fourth. I don't remember, but the very first time we spoke, you were just like, yeah, dude, I'm going to be on Bellator. It's not going to be very, very long. And you were hurt at the time. Like you had nothing lined up. You're like, yeah, but it'll, it'll happen. I'll get a couple of fights. I'll put some dubs together. And, and, and you spoke this into existence. We're not even a year after that. We're like nine months away from that. And here we are. And I fucking blew a gasket when I found out you were on this. I was like so excited um, because I know how hard you've been working, man. I know this hasn't been an easy road for you. And I know you've competed on a lot of like, I can edit this out if you want, but I know that you've been competing like on a lot of small shitty cards for shitty money. I know that's part of it. Everyone has to go through that, but for you to come off of major injury, like you did go through all the rehab, then all of a sudden get an opportunity this fast after rehab. I think that's just amazing, man. Yeah, man, it's really is a blessing and it almost feels surreal, like how fast that it has happened, because like I said, to you I actually imagine racking up three, four, you know, five wins, maybe if I had two before getting to a show like this. And so after going out and having the performance that I did and I guess doing business the way that I did, um, you know, that that just goes into why I also got got this opportunity as well. As I was hoping to myself, like, you know, I never told you this, but I was I was hoping to myself, like, OK, LFA fight pass lfa is big in the midwest and out west so like that's something that's pretty doable um maybe fury fc like one of the regional promotions and then just getting on fight pass i was like if he can do that that'd be freaking gangster and that's an accomplishment and the fact that here you are you're on a major card the only thing that sucks is it's not a showtime slot but beggars can't be choosers it's gonna be streamed on youtube and I mean, what an opportunity to do that in St. Louis in front of your hometown crowd. But before mm-hmm. we get into that, I want to kind of circle back and talk about how we got here. For those of y'all who don't know, um, the last time I spoke to Josh, we talked specifically about this fight. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but there, you'll, you'll understand why I'm talking about this. Shamrock FC 335. It didn't happen that long ago. And can I just say... I looked at Thomas Thatcher and I looked at you on the stage at weigh-ins or whatever. Right. And like Thatcher to me, like kind of reminded me, like if I had to like create a character on UFC four to like fight, (laughs) uh, you know, like John Jones or some shit like that, like my guy would look like Thatcher and then like John Jones, like you're the equivalent of that. It's like, Oh yeah, that guy's a fighter. I could tell. And then the other guy's like, this guy's a creative character that shouldn't be here. Um, (laughs) And I thought you backed that up with the performance. So You fought Thatcher at 335, but it was a significant fight because it was the first fight that you had after the injury. The question I have for you, Josh, is I knew you were going to win that fight. I knew you were going to take care of business early on. But what I wanted to see was, like, were there going to be any nerves? Like, when you throw that first kick off of that damaged leg, like, I know the fight went to the ground relatively quickly and you didn't end the fight. Like, I know you ended it with ground and pound, but like, were you, en- were you nervous at all? Not so much about getting hurt, but like re-injuring yourself at any point during that fight. No, I was just in the flow during that fight. It felt really good. <clears throat> that was the most, I think like locked in I've ever been in a fight, just like in the moment and just there, like right there in the fight, not like, you know, trying to force a TKO or trying to get, like through the experience in any other way other than just like sitting through it and just enjoying it all just really soaking it in were you disappointed at all that it ended as fast as it did um no but i was a little bit surprised that he didn't fight the hands a little bit more Mm -hmm. um but i think 
once he like felt my pressure and my stand up and stuff, he like he knew he was outmatched. I was thinking to myself, I was like, all right, um, this is just my honest opinion. I don't mean any disrespect to Thomas Thatcher. He's a gangster. I think anyone who's like crazy enough to go into a ring against somebody like you is insane. Um, and he's doing something that I could never dream of doing. But Thatcher, to me, like, I just don't think he's quite at that sort of caliber where MMA is his life, like how it is for you. Um, he's yeah. probably more of a casual guy or somebody that does this as like a hobby. And again, no disrespect to him, but there are levels to this. And if you yeah. don't, if you don't train as often as you do, like you're going to see a skill gap very, very early on. And I think that's really what happened, but Hey, props to him for taking the fight. I know that, um, you getting fights, that's not an easy thing, man. Yeah. That, and that goes into like this fight as well. You know, I, I think that's a very similar case with Josh Weston. Um, I don't think that, I think there is going to be a huge skill gap. I don't think that he treats it the same way I do. And <clears throat> you know, that, and that's why it was tough for us to even find a fight. And that's why I'm fighting at 70 because we went through so many opponents and then we'd have like, Oh, maybe this guy, maybe this guy. And so many people, you know, thought about it, but they didn't go through. And Josh uh, Weston took it. Well, Hey, uh, props to him for uh, having the, um, the courage to take the fight um, and to just kind of throw it out there. Like, yo, I'll let, fuck it. Why not? Let's let it rip. Let's talk about him for a little bit. What's interesting is, you're a St. Louis guy. He's a St. Louis guy. He also fought on that same card as you. This is a guy that you know. You've seen this guy before. Heck, he, he may have been warming up to you. He may have been warming up next to you in a locker room at one of those Shamrock fights in the past. Like, this is a guy that I know you're familiar with. Like, what are your thoughts about him? Because we know with fighting, anything's possible. All it takes is a lucky punch, a lucky kick. You got. I know you're going to take this guy seriously. I know you're not sleeping on him. Is there anything about him that stands out to you like, oh, okay, like he's pretty good at X, Y, or Z? I think he's going to be pretty physically strong, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm have to be aware of early. But, I mean, I'm not going to be a weak 170, much less 155. So it's not going to be such a gap there that I have to be, like, overly concerned about it or, like, shape the fight around it. Um, but it's just something to be aware of early in the fight. But other than that, I think I'm going to have a huge skill advantage in the stand-up, boxing, kickboxing, everything, um, and especially in the jiu-jitsu as well, which is going to make him try to wrestle me. But, I mean, my wrestling is, has been the biggest area of growth in my game since the injury. Um, and I think we, we spoke about this last time I was on, um, about how I've just been trying to just, you know, completely change my game and be a more well-rounded fighter. Um, so if he does try to go down there, you know, go that path of wrestling me, I don't see that going very well for him either. I think one of the uh, more interesting things, and I understand it's one of those types of situations, like for people who aren't as familiar with Bellator, I'll try to like lay the land for you guys real quick. Bellator is a type of promotion, and I say this as a massive Bellator fan. I don't think people realize like how much I nerd out over Bellator because I think it's the bomb. But for a lot of these shows, and, and they're not unique, a lot of promotions do this, they'll fight in a place like St. Louis, and one of the first things they do to fill out their undercard is they contact a bunch of the local MMA gyms, and they fill the undercard with local talent. That's a, that it's, it's a clever way to bring in a lot of people to these events. And the reason why I say that is, like, unless you're, like, a huge nerd about fighting like me, or already in it, like Josh, like most people out there probably don't know who like Johnny Eplin is. They probably don't. Um, he's a beast and you really have to like know your shit about fighting. Um, I hate to say it, but it's true. If you like put that guy in the UFC, not only could he hang, but he'd have like quadruple the amount of followers. Everyone would know who he is, but mm -hmm. it's just the way it is, right? So that's mm -hmm. pretty much how it works. And for other people who don't know, the local talent, it's pretty much a one-fight gig. And in order to get a multiple deal in Bellator, you really have to impress. That's really, really hard to do. Mm -hmm. With that being said, your opponent is older than me. I don't get to say that very often. Um, he's been in the game for a long time. He's a big dude. He's, got, he's physical. He's got a lot of experience. But let's just be real. This is pretty much the end of the road for him. Um, and, and, and I mean, let's, uh, that's just a fact. Like, Scott Coker's not going to sign a 40 year old guy with a 500 record. It ain't going to happen. You're yeah. at a different, you're at a different point in life. Like, you're a mm -hmm. young dude. 
you don't have, you have enough experience, but like you're right at that level where you're still not quite in your athletic prime, but you're ready to make like a serious run. I think mm -hmm. it's safe to say this bout means a lot more to you than it does your opponent. I mean, your opponent, Hey, he's playing with house money and no matter what happens, yeah. if he loses, he can write X Bellator vet on his uh, Instagram or that'll help when he wants to open up an MMA gym one day. And good for him. I mean, he's already made it to a right. level that most fighters never make it to. Why are right. you why what makes you so dangerous for this fight? Like, I know you've been thinking about that, and like your dream is to be in Bellator. And it's gonna well, it's gotta be one of those things where it's like, I'll be damned if I'm gonna let this old man take this shit away from me. No, yeah. I mean, the the, the basic point of it is, Tyler, that I'm willing to die. Mm -hmm. Like I am actually literally willing to die for you know it's as simple as that and i know that he's not um i think that he's he's happy with the paycheck he's getting tour could have easily scrapped my fight after i lost the first fight after the second one fell through after the third fourth they could have easily just said ah forget it it's just it's not going to work out with this kid he sold a lot of tickets but fuck it and you know they the people well, really the guys over at shamrock put together the undercard and they they were adamant about keeping me on the card and um you know that that makes me super grateful but it's also a huge confidence builder knowing that you know I, I am irreplaceable at this point in my career but um I think the people around me and people around the St. Louis area there's I'm really starting to get my talent recognized and uh you know this is a really great fight really great fight to showcase my showcase my skill set um go out there and show Scott Coker that I'm really to that level and like you said I'm ready I'm finally am ready to make a real serious run I know, I know you are. Um, and I've watched like your nemesis fights. I've watched your early professional fights. I think you even got a couple of Amy. You're like one of your last couple of Amy fights on uh, YouTube. I've seen all of them. And when I see like your last bout compared to like where you were before you were always good, but like, there's a lot of stuff that you've been working on that I can tell, I can tell a huge difference from like even the nemesis stuff where I was like, Jesus Christ, who is this fucking guy? To like most recently, I like you have grown a lot. I know this is something that really means a lot to you. And is this just another fight in, in a way like for you mentally, as far as preparation goes, because you fought a lot, you fought a lot in front of your hometown people. I know you're a ticket seller, but the stage is different now. Like I understand it's the very first fight of the night and it, the stadium is still going to be filling in at when you're fighting, but you're fighting in a huge arena. Scott Coker's there. Like there are going to be scouts there. The, this is a big stage. So how do you like not psych yourself out? And like, yes, you know, it's a different fight, but like it, it's from a preparatory standpoint, how do you not psych yourself out and just kind of treat it like any of the other ones that you've been in? Sure. I've been working with the uh, sports psychologist. One of the biggest things for me is just co uh, course correction and just bringing myself back to the present moment because it, it is really easy to psych yourself out of a moment or get anxiety or start to get in your head, you know, about the future, about what anything with, with any profession, really. Um, so for me, the biggest thing is just bringing myself back to this present moment, focusing on the task that I have at hand. Um, because I have put the work in, I've, I've done the preparation. I've done everything that I've needed to do to this point to be successful on Saturday night. Um, I, so all I have to do is just sit back really and enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. And uh, Josh, I just couldn't be happier for you to have this opportunity and I'll get a bet on you. I think that's cool, man. Like I'll be able to, Hello. I'll be able to bet money on you. Like I, I will probably only make like 15 cents, but that's okay. Man. <laughs> Like, as long as I end with more money than I had, I will certainly do that. Josh, I'm going to wrap this up because I know that it's fight week. I know you got other things on your mind. I want to give you the opportunity to uh, shout out whoever you'd like to before we sign off. Awesome. Thank you, Tyler. I really appreciate you having me on. I got to give a shout out to Total Roofing here in St. Louis. If you need anything with your gutters, siding, uh, fascia, soffit, roof, anything like that, hit up my cousin over at Total Roofing. St. Louis. If you're looking for a car in the St. Louis area, two car guys has got you with all the best deals in the St. Louis area. So you got to get with them. Um, and if you're going to looking for a place to train or, uh, you know, if you want to get into fighting in the St. Louis area, St. Charles MMA, we're the best team in the world and we're starting to really put it together. Um, we got a hell of a squad. Lucas Clay is fighting for the LFA title. Now he's one of my main training partners. We got, uh, you know, Julius, obviously, 
in the co-main event against Phil Davis. We got we just got a hell of a squad, and you know it's just the beginning. All right, so there you have it. Uh, make sure you follow my boy on Instagram. If you are in the St. Louis area, be sure to go to St. Charles MMA so you can get your ass whipped by Josh. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate your time, man. We'll do it again soon. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you later.